So far in this course, we've seen a number of really impressive cases of evolution, right? Giraffes with long necks, males that have color patterns like females, birds with huge tails, uh, barnacles with excessive penises, and then other species where the males completely atrophy, eusocial organisms that give up reproduction, and even hyena females having phalluses. There's a number of really interesting and almost crazy things that have occurred in evolution, so it almost seems like with evolution all things seem possible. But we've also seen examples of constraints in evolution, things that do not evolve. So the mammal's inner ear needed that second jaw joint to arise first before those original joint bones could be capable of reducing in size and becoming the hearing organs. There are no vertebrates with more than two pairs of limbs. And then there's almost no altruism in nature. So being nice and being cooperative would seem to be really great, but it hardly ever happens. So we've also seen examples where with evolution not all things are possible. There are definitely things that tend not to occur. There's several other constraints we can think of. So in mollusks, this is a very diverse group, lots and lots of species. While the organisms themselves can become very complex, think of an octopus or a squid, they're very intelligent, they have a variety of different behaviors, the shell or skeleton part, the hard part, is always very, very simple. So a hugely diverse group, but the hard part is always very simple. In insects, no insect has more than three body segments, whereas arthropods in general are not limited, right? Millipedes and centipedes have way more than three body segments, but no insect has ever evolved an additional body segment. In mammals, mammals, almost all mammals have seven cervical vertebrae, that's neck vertebrae. Even things like giraffes, which have really long necks, and whales, which essentially have no necks, they have the same number of cervical vertebrae and you would think that this trait would have evolved and changed, but we don't see change in this trait. So there are definitely evolutionary constraints. So ways in which evolution is strongly limited and does not occur. If we think about what leads to evolutionary novelty, evolutionary novelty needs two things. First, a mutant with the new variant has to be able to arise. And then second, when that variant arises, it would then be selected for, in order for it to go from one mutant in the current generation to down the road, multiple generations on, a state where everybody has inherited copies of that mutation. So if we have a lack of novelty, which is what a constraint would be, it therefore either has to be due to new variants not being produced, and we'll term these developmental constraints and look at an example, or the mutations can arise, the trait can be formed by mutation, but then selection is not going to be able to take hold and drive it to fix in the population. And so we'll actually divide this way of evolutionary processes being constrained into selective constraints, functional constraints, and pleiotropic constraints, which we'll look at examples of each of these as we go.